Today's case is about a young man who crashed his car in a remote lake in California after sitting in his car refusing to move for several hours. Today's case is about Bryce Las Pisa who disappeared on August 30th of 2013. Bryce was a college student attending Sierra College, which is near Sacramento. His parents were in Laguna Niguel, California, which is south of Los Angeles, basically a Los Angeles suburb. And the, the case of Bryce Las Pisa is essentially a couple days before his disappearance, he had a string of erratic, strange behavior, also heavy alcohol use, and there was even some drug use as well. Vivans, I believe, were involved in this case. He gave some, before it, before Bryce's disappearance, he gave his best friend some of his possessions. He gave him earrings and an Xbox, and his friend felt something was wrong, and he called his mom and to, to let her know, and Bryce also broke up with his girlfriend, who was named Kim at the time, and right before he disappeared, Kim, his mom and Bryce had a weird interaction where Kim basically took away his keys to prevent him to drive. He eventually he was given his keys back and he went on his way. But during that time, Bryce told his mom he had something important he needed to talk to her about. He needed to discuss with her and he was cryptic with his answer and he basically didn't share any further details. A lot of people in this case believe if they could just find out what Bryce needed needed to discuss with his mom, this case would be more solvable. Bryce eventually, this is this is where he gets confusing. When he left Kim's house, Kim's place, his parents believed that he was going to go to his apartment and he didn't. His parents got a roadside request from their insurance company in Button Willow, California, which is about halfway between Sierra College and Laguna Niguel, California. Bud and Willow is about three hours from Laguna Niguel, California. And his parents eventually put two and two together and basically believed that Bryce was on his way home to see them in person. Bryce's parents were upset, but they eventually figured he'd come home. Bryce's parents were able to call the roadside assistance provider and basically ask them what is going on with their with with their son and the roadside service provider who provided gas said he saw Bryce Bryce seemed okay as from my understanding he gave Bryce gas and he went on his way but he didn't see any issues with Bryce but he did feel it was kind of an odd interaction then eventually the California State Patrol got involved and they t went to Bryce and Bryce seemed compliant. They did a field sobriety check. They searched his car and they couldn't find anything. And the police let Bryce go, but they basically called his parents and basically made him talk to his parents to let him know that he was on his way ho home. And the, the police felt invested that he would go home and they they left but in the meantime Bryce is sitting in his car just staring out the window for hours and it's obviously very bizarre eventually later that night the roadside assistance provider so this is like on, so this is on August 29th called Bryce's mom again and said hey I I can check if Bryce ever left and Bryce's mom was like, no, he, he, he left. I talked to him. She had faith that he left. And the, the service attendant, the, the service provider went on his own to check to see if Bryce ever left, and he never did. So it's at night, he basically called Bryce's mom and said, hey, Bryce still hasn't left. And Bryce's mom and dad now are very upset. And they basically were just like, you just need to get home get home and Bryce and the service provider got on the highway and 
the service provider actually followed him for several miles, close to an hour, following him down the interstate in California. And the service provider eventually felt confident that he was on the way home and he was going to make it home. So he pulled off and obviously, I guess, went home. On August 30th at 2 a.m., Bryce was talking to his parents and, like, he was like, I'm exhausted. I've been up for 24 hours straight. I need to pull over and take a nap. And his parents obliged, and that's what he did. The problem is, the next morning, California State, po State Police shows up at his parents' house, and they're like, there was an accident. The police told his parents that his car was involved in an accident near Castilla Lake, about 50 miles north of Los Angeles. And this was like a, a park. Uh, a large park with a lake in it. His car there was involved in, uh, it, it appeared from what the police perspective was that he tried to go down, like he put his car into a ditch and commit suicide. There was uh, two small drops of blood in the car, but there was not any, there was no sign of Bryce. So there, the, there, there was a window broken out uh, there was a window, the back window was broken out, but, uh, there was no sign of Bryce, and Bryce's phone and wallet and all his stuff was still in the car, but there was no sign of Bryce. There was not a blood trail. It was, he just disappeared. They, during the investigation, they, the, there were two sniffing dogs that track Bryce is sent to a truck stop so some theorize that Bryce walked to the truck stop to get a ride and could have been abducted or he could have gotten a ride somewhere else but um, that's really all the information we have in this case this case is uh, its distinct feature is Bryce sitting in the car for hours and hours and hours in the hot summer in California not moving it really it's a really bizarre situation where he is basically refusing to continue to get on the road and drive. And as this case is, at this point, over 10 years old, this is the, uh, the, the case is over 10 years old, and there's been no resolution to this case. It was on Disappeared, uh, that famous show about missing people, but there has not been really a lot of leads in this case. And it's important, I think, to point out that Bryce's, Bryce did not have a history of, of mental illness. As far as I can tell, this was a, within the last couple of months, you, you know, just in the last, right before he disappeared, just in the, the following uh, week or so before he disappeared, he had all these problems. And it, this isn't a situation that through as a child, middle school, high school, he had all these psychological problems. He had a girlfriend, he had friends, he was a college student. So that just makes his disappearance more unusual and ask more questions than it has answers. That's Bryce's story. What do you think happened to Bryce? And uh, as I'm gonna end today's crime episode, I'm gonna cut out on YouTube's best amateur detective and I'm just gonna start saying, for more true crime content from YouTube's best detective, subscribe to Crime to today.